about the truth, but he was paid off to tell lies. Right? And they, guess what? They, the the uh, government pushes them. Right? Just like they push, uh, what's the other guy, the, the, the um, Muslim, Farrakhan? All right, he's high. All right? The Blackstone Power Rangers, they're high. All right? They're one of the highest servants of the rich elite to push their agenda. Okay? So, everybody thinks Martin Luther King is such a great person. You wouldn't follow the scriptures, so he's not great. If you're not following the scriptures, you're not nothing. All right? That's why, really, at the end of the day, nobody's nothing. Everybody, I mean, everybody's nobody because we can't keep the Bible to our own abilities. But those who turn their backs on God, they will definitely be they deserve that. I've heard that about the Masons before. I've read some. I never heard that Martin Luther King was a Mason. Was a Mason? I did a lot of research on even here at the University Library years ago when I found all the people who were Freemasons, like say George Washington and Franklin Roosevelt, and I simply said that Bill Clinton was a Mason, but they kicked him out. They botched him. They, 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 they don't kick you out, they're going to kill you. Well, I know, that they're too. Killed. There's no getting kicked out of the Mason, you get killed. killed. That's what happened to Martin Luther King. That's what happened to Malcolm X. Okay? They get killed. Right? I don't know what Malcolm X is based but I know for sure what Malcolm X is based on. It was based on Martin Luther King. You got that though? I'm doing a lot of fun. It's Isaiah. But we're going to read through the scripture and they prophesied about Martin Luther King and the type of things he preached. Well, I'm Martin Luther King. I, if I was there, I wouldn't have. It's like I ain't with Obama. Just because he's black doesn't mean nothing. Obama's a sellout. Yeah, he's right. a sellout. He's a sellout. He's a tool, he's the, a tool of the, the military industrial complex. Jeremiah 23 and 24. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, said the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, said the Lord? I have heard what the prophet said that prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How? There you go, that dream, that dream. And it's already prophesied before he even knew it. Alright? Talking about he had a dream or this and this and that. That was something just to set up the people. Alright? Nothing but to bring the people so called together. Because at the end of the day, the rich elite want a one world government. Alright? They want all the countries to come together. They want everybody to come together, get chipped so they can own everybody. Alright? And that's basically doing what? Making them guide. To say you, I, I can say whether you live or die, what, how much money you make, what job you have, what type of life you're going to have. That's what they want to do at the end of the day. They want to have one world government. That's why they're pushing this one world religion that God loves everybody. Because that's a one world religion that they're pushing. The Bible don't speak about God loving everybody. All right? But I understand you read John 3.16. Yeah, we'll read that. John, read John 3.16. Yeah, we'll read it all day. All right. Studying, right? Well, you can tell I've read a few books. I hope, I hope, I hope it gets a Greek. Like I said, when I was in New Mexico in the mid 90s, I did ancient Greek and Roman. Uh, that was my thing. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Great. 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 Because I wanted to always speak Latin and Greek like Thomas Jefferson and those guys. Oh, and James yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> St. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, I, got, I, got, I, got, I got a question. That word world right there, what is the Greek definition? Because it's bad that New Testament is written in Greek. So what's the cosmos? Cosmos? Let's see. Okay. The ancient Greek is pretty bad. You, you, you got, got it right. You, you, you're right. I, I, I dropped out because there were guys who've been studying ancient Greek for three years so, and barely made a sense. So you know, you know that word cosmos is there, right? Well, I don't know that it's there. No, you tell me. You said it's cosmos. You're right. You're right. It's cosmos. All right. So let's read things. the definition of cosmos. An act in her harmonious arrangement or constitution, order, or government. Government. All right. The government is not the whole globe. All right. When you say the government, you're not talking about India, you're talking about one establishment, establishment in the area. It's like you have a third world country. Somebody say, oh, I was in a different world. All right. 
it's a different establishment. Just like you have the Bloods and Crips, those are worlds. You have the Crip world, you have the Blood world. All right, you have the poor world, you have the rich world. All right, so when we say God's love this world, he wasn't talking about the world, and you know it because the definition is cosmos, which means a government. All right, not the whole inhabited earth. Okay, go ahead. Are you, that's uh, it. No, I was about to do the other one. Okay. Because you, you said you studied Greek, so what other two Greek words was translated to the English word world? You got cosmos, that's one, and then there's two more. We're going to give it to you. I'm going to give the whole inhabitable. You got that one? Like you said, it's hard to study yeah, Greek. Greek. It's not that hard. It's not. Uh, no, you can let them get it on. Yeah, the definition that means that once you get the definition that means that it'll give you to the scriptures. I really do. I don't have any money. I'll have some money next week. All right, next week. I like to hand them out to broke and then rich. Broke and then rich. Just hand them out. Pretty much broke all the time, but you know, whatever. I just want to have it. That's what I was doing. That's pretty good. shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. So that's that's the whole inhabited earth. Alright? That that definition is what? It's the inhabited earth. Oh, uh, what's, the, what's the Greek word? Oh, uh, so like, uh, the Greek word is oinkimi. Oinkimi. Alright? The inhabited earth. Go ahead. The portion of the earth inhabited by the Greeks in distinction from the lands of the barbarians, the Roman Empire, all subject of the empire, the whole inhabited earth, the world, the inhabitants of the earth, men, the universe, the world. So why is that? When you say God so love the world, they're supposed to put Boykin right there, right? No, they put cosmos. They put cosmos on purpose because they knew what they were saying. And the person that translated it knew what they were doing. Alright? In the English, there's three sets of for the word world. You go into Hebrews, there's a there's a plural form. Go ahead. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God, who at sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past to the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Yep, Lord, worlds. W-O-R-L-D-S. There's only one world. It's earth. Alright? So what is about worlds? It gotta be mean something different. You know what that world's mean? It's eons, times. God made the times. Okay? Dispensation. Bronze Age, Stone Age. Dispensation. Alright. Uh, it's an old, it's dark an old age. biblical uh, thing that goes back to at least so your 19th John, century. So your John 3 16 is, is not what, it, what you think it means. God so loved, basically saying God so loved the government of Israel. God so loved the Israelites that he gave his only begotten son. Alright, because guess what? You go in Isaiah, Isaiah 17 chapter, get that for me real quick. He called Israel his world. Okay? Just like you'll call your child your world. Okay? You'll call if you call your children, oh my children are my world, that's what God's saying to the Israelites. God said, Look, his world that he gave his only begotten son. Alright? And the world is Israel. Alright? You're gonna get that. Isaiah 45 and 17. 
Israel shall be saved. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Israel, keep that in mind. We shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. You see, ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. He's calling us just like a world without end. Okay? So he said that. So that's your answer right there. Now give me that in Amos, the last chapter, where, where it says, uh, Rinna and Edom. We shall take the women of Edom. Alright. But there's a, there's a discrepancy, discrepancy right there also. Alright? Uh, Amos chapter 9, verse, uh, verse 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up, raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old that they may possess the remnant of e Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, said the Lord, that doeth this. Yep, so basically, that scripture is, we're going to possess the land, alright? Because in the next book, he don't say nothing about Edom, he's going to make it into the king, they're going to rule around, they're going to possess them. No, it's something about that land, because... So what's what going to happen to Edom? Am I going to be coded like a fucker, or am I going to be slave? What, I mean, you're going to be a slave for a thousand years. Alright, we're gonna build the kingdom. We're gonna build the kingdom. Okay, so I go out and I'll get my trowel and my uh, stone masonry and I'll build, which I'm having a problem with. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna so be building and then, then, then. It's gonna be hard for us to save. After we're done with you, we're gonna throw you in a pit and put you to death because we don't have no need for the wicked. Alright, once, once, once the Edomites are put to death, the Chinese are going to live there, the Japanese, the Africans, everybody will go in their lands and live in peace because they're not, there's no more going to be a wicked nation. Oh, so you're actually putting the Chinese and the Japanese now into your salvation. So you said before it was Negro, no. Latino, and Native American. Native American. Uh, that left out all the ages. No, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't put them in salvation because they're not going to receive salvation. Salvation, salvation is one of the salvation is one of this place. As we, we told you about World War III, America's going to be destroyed. Right. The only people that's going to make it out of this place, because this place is going to get hit by thermal nuclear missiles. You can't get on a boat. You're not going to be able to get on a boat and escape this. You're not going to be able to escape the destruction of America. And where do you so get this? That salvation. Is this some vision you had, like Nostradamus? It's in Revelation. Where? Show me. It's all over. I can go down. Show me. Oh, you just talked to me about it. No, give me the give me uh, 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 Revelation 21. Revelation 21 and 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Yeah, this, this is the world. Tell me about the kingdom of heaven, how everything is going to be, uh, what you have to do to get there, and what and what's going to happen to people that's not going to get it. For the first heaven and the first earth. Were passed away and there was no more sea. Yep, that's talking about America. The first and first earth. That's this king. Heaven and the earth is king. They seize a king. She's also king of people. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from, from God out of heaven. Yeah, so I, you've seen it coming down from God out of heaven. Give me Acts, the first, uh, the second chapter. You know what I mean? Because we're going to get saved by the chariots of God. Alright? Where are we going? Where are we going? We leaving? Go ahead. Oh. I thought we was going to turn around. Let me see. Acts second chapter. Same Jesus. Oh, when the nine slide. Okay. Uh, the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. All right, this is Christ when he, when he uh, rose, when he got uh, taken up in the cloud. And I tell you in the book of Psalms, he made the clouds his chariot. Okay, so the clouds that you see in the sky are actually not all the them, all of them, and they're symbolic as chariots. You read in the Bible, it says cloud, the cloud to do this, or like home of Egypt, it said the cloud followed them by night. By day, 
you're going to take 10% of your frankincense and give it to the Israelites. You got the best wood for the best gold, you take 10% of that gold and give it to the Israelites. Alright? That's how it works. Now, if that don't sound too bad at all from other nations, they can live in peace. We have plenty of gold, we have plenty of frankincense, we have plenty of earth. To the point they, what they're giving up is not going to hurt them at all. But all the nations giving it to us can make us the richest nation on the that's the kingdom of heaven for Israel. It's not like we're not going to be working. We're basically how, how the so-called white man runs everything. He goes into Egypt. He goes into this other country and says, this is how you should do things. We're going to do that but righteously. We're going to say, hey, you know, these are the commandments. Y'all keep that. We're going to come and check up on them, make sure everything is running right. And go back home to our land. All right, we're going to be the governors of the earth. Just like so-called white man. He's the governor of the earth right now. He's just quick. Revelation 15 and 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. A sea of glass mingled with fire. A sea of glass mingled with fire was talking about America. Now, why I said sea of glass, it's talking about we're going to be outside that ozone layer. And once you got inside the ozone layer, you feel like watching the TV. You know, it's gonna, you know that ozone layer is going to make it like a different aspect. Go ahead. Mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, then they got the victory over the beast. Who's the beast? It's Esau. Okay? So my wife got this. He's from here. Beautiful Revelation, seven years. Right? That's the beast. And over his image, and over his image, right? and over his mark, that's his belief. His image is his belief. Right? Also his honor. Okay? But it's mainly his belief. And his mark is that RFID chip. Right? That's the main thing you that's that's what's coming up prophetically is that RFID chip. Right? They come out with that RFID chip. You gotta remember that. Don't don't take that RFID chip. There you go. RFID chip. Because guess what? The dollar's gonna crash. It's crashing right now. America's what uh, 15 billion, 15 trillion dollars. Really more than that. It's probably about 16, 18, 18, 18 19 trillion dollars. When Obama came in office, it was about 14 trillion. So he quadrupled, he accelerated. Okay? But at the end of the day, they want the dollar to crash. And guess what's gonna happen when the dollar crash? So you got a thousand dollars in your pocket. Cash it's gonna mean nothing. You go to Jimmy John say, hey. Uh, you never come with number two. Right? Like, where's your chip? It's right, right here with your arm. Like, I don't got, I got cash. That's, 